Welcome back. Let's pick a random tournament and choose to play in it and see how things go. Um, there's a Rapid Arena in progress. So a few minutes ago I was trying to play some bullet chess and I won a game and lost a game and won a game and lost a game and just alternated and we scored 50%, which is pretty awesome. Oh! Yeah, congrats uh, on, I guess, 77th place. Mm -hmm. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping maybe if I slow the game down so I have time to move the pieces, and my opponents likewise, maybe I'll find some good moves today. You never know. That's why we have to play the games. Also, oh wow, I'm playing very quickly, but... That doesn't necessarily mean I'm an expert in the Sicilian defense. On Lee Chess, for some reason, people don't play the open Sicilian. I don't understand it, but it's like they think I'm an expert in this opening, so they don't play the variations which offer white the most advantage. Um, so, yeah, we're going to try to play d5. I need to slow down just a little bit think about my moves. Yes, yeah, so they prevent me from playing d5, but I'm able to land knight d4 here. And then let's castle. Um, Alright, so knight d5 is not on the table. Looks like we're gonna play some different move sequence. Um, we need to get the rook out of this line so this bishop doesn't collect the rook. Uh, we've got to play knight e8, painful as that is. Um, so yeah, they've taken the center, but we control some space. Um, I'm going to play d6 next, and things will be okay. So this pawn's loose. It's a little overextended. My bishop covers the square in front. So yeah, they take this way, which frees my knight up to make fun threats in their position. Um, so they got two pieces attacking, I've got two defending. I could add a third defender, or I could play the knight out. But, like, this knight threat seems unstoppable. So let's just do this. And that's a quadruple fork. So, plus, we're also threat. Well, their knight covers the square. Um, but yeah, we still have a fork. We're still hitting the bishop and the rook. Let's take the bishop. Um, so, that having been played, um, they still have pressure in this position. I still need to play carefully. I want to play one of my rooks to d8, probably rook fd8. Um, but also I want to keep an eye on trying to checkmate them on this light square diagonal. So this is a nice target to have. If we could pile up more pieces on that square, so much the better. But I think, oh, oh, they're going to help us out. That's nice. Um... They're going to remove anything that could prevent me from moving there. No, I'm sorry, their knight could actually prevent this. So I do need to take here. And I think this is fine. We're going to exchange into an endgame, and I enjoy my endgames. So we got pressure on both files. We've got a nice little target to constantly bother. Um... So next, um, I think to avoid knight forks, we're going to play rook c6 and possibly aim for rook c2. This looks more promising than aiming to collect the pawn. Uh, although I see I do allow pawn d4, pawn d5, so in my threats... I'm allowing counterplay. I don't care for that. Um, 
I'm assuming that I still have a commanding advantage, so I'm just going to play as if I do. They might be able to play g4 and rebut my entire attack. And I think, though, this weakens f4. So that's the trade-off. So now my bishop drops back, and this becomes a target. This is already a target. This is a target. I'm just assuming something's going to work out here. Yeah. Um, Alright, so they're knights on the edge of the board. They are somewhat threatening to play knight c5, but then the knight has difficulty going to any square after c5. Um... So instead, they break out of this pin that I had been threatening. Um, hmm. Hmm. I want to blockade this square. But if I like try to use my bishop, they go back with the knight. Oh, well, they can't go back with the knight. Yes, yeah, so I can actually plump my bishop right down here. Their king is not safer here. They were usually they should have considered king h1, uh, but then they'd still need to defend against this bishop d5, so it doesn't help them too much. They should consider rook g3 to break this pin. They missed rook g3, so consequently I have bishop d5, and this rook is going to have to pick. Does it? Well, no. Rook g3 enables an attack on the second rank. Really, the whole mistake was playing the knight off to the edge here. Right. Um, they have some fun attacks here. Thankfully, I've got this square covered. Uh, so queen g3 looks strong. Is queen g3 completely winning? I mean, it's my best move, so regardless of its evaluation, I should just play it. Um, and then consider taking all the stuff here. Um... Do I have better? I don't think so. Yes, let's take this with check. Um, this is where we have to calm down a little bit, remember what we're aiming for. So, yeah, I think this position looks great. Um, Wait, rook e6 mates? Not quite. Rook e6, king f1, queen h3. Uh, yeah, it's just crushing. Thanks for the game. I mean, we could play it out. If you don't believe that I know how to win this. It's possible I don't. I'd like to think I do. That would... Well, we walk into a fork, but it's not the end of the world. Um, yeah, let's just keep things simple. Try to make sure I don't lose control of um, the f6 square. If the rook moves, this pawn drops. If they push the pawn, it becomes very difficult for them to attempt to win this. So they're trying to hold on in some kind of holding pattern while producing threats. But there's only so much they can do to just hold on while doing nothing. Um, so now they need to do something. Uh, 
Um, meanwhile, I guess I should continue piling up on that pawn or something like that. It's not super obvious where the win is here. But if I protect this, I can't get mated. Unless, like, I just carelessly allow this knight and rook somehow to mate me, but it seems implausible. So yeah, rook f5 next covers a lot of territory. Rook f4 might also be interesting, but rook f5, rook d5 allows me to collect this pawn. Um, so let's do that. All right. We're not going to be dissuaded by these king moves. I know they keep looking for tactics. I haven't seen any tactics to salvage this. We collect the free pawn. And then go back to defend this A pawn again. Um, Alright, let's push this one. There's only so much their pieces can do here. Um, let's offer a rook exchange targeting this pawn. All right, should we capture the target? Um, not yet. We should throw in one move first. So avoid dropping this. If the knight moves, we have rook d5. If the king moves and doesn't defend the pawn, we could just take it. So they didn't defend this, so we can just take it. And now the king is in a mating net. Not really, but it's going to force the pieces off the board. All right, let's exchange this. Let's exchange that. Works for me. You're still going to make me go win this. Okay. I can demonstrate this if you like. Um, yes, no, you're absolutely right. Yeah, as I'm just showing now. Is my connection okay? Connection looks fine. Alright, now I just have to wait 4 minutes and 20 seconds. So, how's everybody's weekend? Alright, thanks for game. 141st place. That's not bad. Yeah, when people play in these tournaments, they fight ever so slightly better than when they play in the lobby. So when you see like a 2,000 rated opponent in this tournament, understand that that's really more like 2020 or 2050 or something like that. Um, oh, I forgot. I actually have a decent rapid rating, which I guess I'm putting on the line here. Well, how about that? I should put some good effort into these games. Italian opening, you never let me down. Except when you do. <laughs> Alright, are we going to get the gambit? We don't get the gambit. Um, so... I forget this line. How bad could this be? We're going to play d3, which looks cowardly. Um... And probably is. Well, how bad could this be, though? Because now I'm threatening queen b3, bishop e6, queen takes pawn, rook b8. Yeah, this could be fun. Let's discover what's down the rabbit hole.
Oh, White tries to avoid it because if you play in tournaments, you probably need to like memorize entire books about the main lines if you want to play them. Um, there's just way too much theory on the main lines. So people play anti-mainline stuff um, because like they don't have time to study for the tournaments. It's just a question of like their ability to invest in the game. I mean, uh, yeah, no, I think you're right. It is lazy. Yep, that, that's right. Ah, nice. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Alright, so I'm going to attempt to exchange knights here. And hopefully this will be okay. What I'm nervous about is, like, if I do queen takes here, they have bishop e6. And it's not clear how I survive this. If I do knight takes, like, this pawn hangs. So I think I have to do pawn takes. Which is disgusting. And admits that I have the worst position, but I survive. Yeah, I think there was one tournament, an interzonal tournament, played about like 40 years ago, where some Argentinian masters got paired against, I forget if it was Russia or some other country, but they all played the Nidorf, and they played um, the main line that one of the teammates plays all the time. And in all three games, the same refutation of this line appeared. And I forget which side won that match. But, like, you see complete blowouts where just some new move appears that completely overturns the evaluation of the previous so many centuries of theory. So, uh, yeah, it can be dangerous to play main lines. Unless you are a top grandmaster studying all the lines with a computer. Otherwise, it's a bit risky. Um, so, yeah, I think most players do prefer to be a little bit lazy. Which is a shame, because, like, the Romantic era of chess... You look at all the great games of the 20th century, there is tremendous courage and fighting spirit among so many players, and likewise in the previous century. Um, yeah, it really is exciting. So it raises the question, why don't people play the most exciting lines? I don't know. Um... All right, our opponent seems to be thinking about how best to make use of their bishop pair or something like that. Um, I know I need to play like rook d1, knight e4, bishop somewhere. There's not really a whole lot of space to move my bishop. Also, knight e4 is not super great because eventually f5 is going to land. Um... They are offering to exchange pieces. Yes, please. Very yes, please. Um, now, the only reason I don't exchange knights is because, like, then uh, they still have the bishop pair, and these pawns roll faster against my lone knight. So, but either way... I can't find a square for my bishop, so I'm just going to play rook d1 here, understanding that my rook is never going to control the f-file. 
But if the queen moves, then I can play c5 without it being obvious how their queen can chase this pawn. This knight they have on f5 is a bit awkward, and I expect they'll try to exchange it for one of my pieces soon. And I'm not super opposed to such an exchange. I, well, maybe I am. I'm cramped. I... <sighs> what to do? I mean, bishop d2 makes some sense here. But it's sad having to look at moves like that. That just point out how sad my position is. Um... But okay. There it is. Yeah, there's also a thing with tournaments and prize money. I think there's two considerations. One is the odds of getting a top prize versus the odds of winning. Um, so if you were to actually talk with the Masters, you could maybe convince a rational master that it's worth taking risks. Um, that the way tournament prize structures are funded or the way it's allocated, usually it does make sense to take the risk. If you can play for a draw or play to win or lose, the win or lose uh, option, the greater risk, um, has a greater expected value of return because the top prizes are so large. Um, so that's one consideration. Uh, the other consideration is um, how much energy it takes to play a game where you're playing wild attacking moves every single move. I used to play tournaments this way. It used to be good fun, and at some point it stopped being fun, because opponents were actually prepared for my nonsense, and could refute it. And when I started losing, like, every game, then that was not as fun. Um, so, yeah, I think it's just a matter of, if you want to win... Um, you do have to conserve your energy throughout these exhausting U.S. tournaments that are all rushed with many games per day. If you were to go to, like to Europe or something, they would play at a more relaxed pace um, and be able to think about their moves on each game. But in the U.S., tournaments are just many games per day. Um, kind of, I don't know, it's really grueling. So, at least in the U.S., um, they don't take as many risks. On an international tournament, I don't really know. Um, I don't know, I don't follow those games as much as I should, but it's possible that players in other countries might take greater risks than are taken in U.S. tournaments. I should think more about this. Um... So, I want to play queen here, but more important is to get my bishop out of danger and back here where it can do something, and maybe even here, if they, like, play h5, which they're, there's no way they're playing h5, but still. Um, my key point is I'm activating my rook here. <laughs> they retreat the rook. That is just cowardly, honestly. Um... Okay. You do you. I do me. Um, so I'm going to play with spirit. Their rooks are not connected. If they played rook f8, then I'd be a little nervous about doing this. But since the rooks are not connected, I'm just going to attack. Um, no, I just play a5, a6, a7, a8, right? And there's nothing they can do. So, let's see what they do. Hmm. 
Hmm. I see. Yeah, I guess players at near the top, well, a lot of players have to worry about their ratings. And based on their rating, they get invited or not invited to certain tournaments. So playing in an open tournament is an opportunity uh, for some players to get rating points, for some players to get money. Um, so this is my big idea. Let's see how this big idea goes, but... I've played this big idea in a tournament game once before. I just rushed the pawn down there and there's like no way to stop it. So it's a good idea. It's got a track record. Note that this is defended by this, so they can't play rook d8. So this is my big idea. Mm-hmm. Now, the tournament game I played the same idea in didn't have this many pieces. I think we exchanged queens or something. But they still had nothing they could block my rook pawn with. Or my, uh, yeah, rook pawn. In shogi, we call it the edge pawn because it's on the edge of the board. In chess, we typically just call it a rook pawn because, like, the rook is on that file. Um, so here... I think I played bishop f2. I'm double checking how risky that is. Um, King h1's not bad. But uh, if I can get away with it, rook f2 looks reasonable too. If king, bishop f2, bishop takes, king takes, queen uh, a7, I don't have a good response. So, okay, they actually are able to block my threat in this case. So this is going to be a protracted slugfest of some sort. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. Um. Hmm. Well, we're not moving the rook off the A-file, are we? Hope not. Maybe so. This position's complicated all of a sudden. This looks like an idea. I hope it's an idea. Problem is, like, they can attack my rooks. So, here I had intended queen b5. I think I still intend queen b5. I don't see anything wrong with it right now. They do have queen c2. Um, after queen c2, sacrifices don't seem to work. I might have rook a1. Oh. Oh, wow, that's sharp. I'm just helping them attack. What am I doing? I'm not happy about this. What have I done? Um, how in the world have I managed to throw this? That's fine. It's getting scarier and scarier by the move. 
but I don't see a knockout blow yet. Um, yeah, the fact that like my king is tucked behind all these other pieces is what I'm relying on to assume that I'm safe. Um, but it's just very difficult for them to directly access my king here. I think this is okay. And I don't know where to put the rest of my pieces, though. Because this bishop actually does stop me from playing pawn a7. So I need to be very, very careful about what happens next. As I'm low on time. Um... Threatening queen c2. If I go there, they play bishop c5. I can't do that. Um, I'm threatening queen c2, but this gives me an escape square. I could play queen. All right, that's not what I thought they'd do. Um, let's go back. And maybe put my pieces on more active squares this time and play h3 when I have a chance. Try to of oh, well we just dropped a piece. All right, just pretend it's fine. It's not. <laughs> well, this could be worse. H four might have been smarter. Um. I've been making all kinds of threats this whole time, but. It's not good enough. There's a check. There's a check. They have to play e4. And they're still better, but they have to win the... Oh. Well, they're actually surviving that. Uh, somehow. I am mated. I walked into a checkmate. Should have played h4 earlier. Miss the mate in one. We went on time. Not sure what the opponent's rating was. Um, if I can find my name in the list here. Anybody can go to the website, go look it up, but I can't find my name in the list. If I could find... Oh, here's my name. The last opponent, 1959. So, yeah, apparently... To get a 2200 rating, you have to be lucky enough to avoid getting mated in one. Um, that's what 2200 means today, although it is Friday. Um, Alright, no threat here. Alright, they saw the threat. Um, hmm, what to do? 
Let's pin the knight. All right, that works for me. Thanks for the game. Yeah, he had mate in one or mate in two. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I think it's just that it's Friday, and I got very lucky that game. It was a complicated game, but I did get lucky. Yeah. Uh, let's play the Sicilian and pretend that we understand it. Now, there is some... To some degree, I have studied small parts of the Sicilian. Um, there's just a lot I've not studied. So if they take with the bishop, I can take back with the center pawn and extend my influence into the center of the board. Um, all right, we're going to prevent pawn d4 by putting our knight on d4. I think this is playable. All right, see you around. Um... Hmm, sure would be nice to know some theory about now. So, bishop c4. If I play knight f6, pawn e5 looks scary. Let's play pawn d6 to prevent pawn e5, or at least discourage it. Also threatening, like... Oh, they're going to let me do this, so let's do it? Is there a downside to this? There might be, um, but to me it looks like they'll have to inter. well, they don't have another way to protect this knight. Um, this could lead to some fun tactics. Maybe I play queen d7 next. Right, so I thought this is forced here. And if that's forced... Um, then we just take here, I think. And this position is less interesting than it used to be. Which, not great for the spectators, but it's good for this player. Um, who doesn't know the Sicilian that well. Ooh, where's my knight going? I don't know. Um... Yeah, this is awkward. This is so awkward. Because they have pawn e5 if I'm not careful. I don't know what to do. I think we are going to offer the bishop for a knight exchange here in just a second. Just so I escape the opening in one piece. Uh, yeah, blitz can be really rough if you've not played a ridiculous amount of it. Or at least three minute blitz. Um, it's easy to blunder. So, all right, so here, and I remember the days where, like, if you were on Lee Chess's front page, uh, that would not just be for English, but you'd be there for every language, and people from every time zone would show up to watch you play. Um, there's some pressure. Here we got our small tight-knit group of folks watching. And it could just because maybe if I had a title more people would watch or something like that. I don't know. Ok. 
Okay, this bishop is awkward and forever will be awkward, so let's just remove it. Um, and then control this square. So normally I'd try to play a6, b5, and something following that, but here I just don't see the point. Maybe I should have played bishop d4 and e5, and knight f4. That could have been fun. Well, that's a different game. Um... I keep talking about how this is your Dragon Sicilian Bishop and you should never exchange it. But, um, if you control the dark squares, there's no reason to hold on to it. And, uh, I predict we will control the dark squares, so... Um, I'm not afraid of some attack landing on my dark squares here. Yeah. Yeah, it does bring views. I'm just referring to like when you get like a hundred people watching instead of eight. Um. The internet ain't what it used to be. Wait, I can play F3 here. F3, if they take, we get some fun attacking chances. Even if it doesn't mate. It's too fun to turn down. We can't say no to this move. Right, and if they don't take it, we still get fun attacking chances. Because that's a threat. And so now we've protected a pawn deep in our enemy's or opponent's territory. Uh, what can the opponent do? I don't know. Um... We protect our knight and start to threaten to advance further. Um, oh, this is interesting. They're forced to capture our pawn. So go ahead, take the pawn. And then we win the queen and have a difficult endgame. But it is a good endgame. So, we'll attempt to enjoy it, but this is not going to be a cakewalk at all. I need to be careful not to get mated, and I want to advance on the side of the board. Um, it's the key to this, in this case, was playing b5 immediately to prevent a5. Or a4. a4 could have prevented b5 from landing. Um, but now we have ability to use our queen on both the left and the right side of the board. Yeah, Eric could definitely... He can pull in his own audience. He's got quite the following. Uh, what can we say? Yeah, Eric's awesome. Um, Alright, so this is my target. I guess they... I guess what I'm trying to do is exchange one rook here. Normally, if you have duplicated pieces... Um, if your opponent has duplicated pieces, you'd not want to exchange them. But in this case, a rook pair is actually a very strong pair of duplicated pieces. So it behooves me to try to force exchanges here. Uh, so it's just going to be a pure queen versus rook and knight endgame. Um, if I exchange rooks on this square, does that make it easier or harder for them to defend? I think it makes it harder for them to defend all their pawns in this case. Uh, yeah, in fact, I am winning a pawn here. Check.
and then we take here and then we went upon that's a nice combination yeah that could be I don't know if he multicasts or not um, strictly speaking multicasting I don't think is normally allowed by twitch but maybe for some people they make exceptions um, and just allow it. Um, what to do? We really need this pawn. I should have taken this one first. Because there's some circumstances where it just cannot be captured. Uh, then we'll take here. This is a target, but the bigger threat, of course, is to play this pawn up the board. Um, yep, no reason to not just go for it. Still no reason to not just go for it. I mean, it looks spooky a little bit, but it's not. Yep, and they attack my queen, so we move the queen. Um, Alright, yeah, I was debating taking the knight with the queen, but the knight and all their other pieces weren't making significant enough threats for that to matter. Yeah, technically speaking, most partner agreements don't allow for that. Um... Well, we're on our way toward the top with four wins in a row. Which means we're probably going to get a harder pairing this time. Um, right as we're nearing the end of the tournament. I guess if the opponent goes berserk, I'll try to honor that and do the same. Irrespective of who the opponent is. Um, we'll see how that goes. But yeah, we late joined, so our winning chances, our chances of winning the tournament are decreased for having late joined. Bishop g4, h here. Um, let's drop back. I don't really know what to do here other than making some generic threats that might be effective, but might not. Um, oh! Alright, we are going to exchange a few pieces, but maybe not too many. Um, maybe we're exchanging too many pieces. I don't know. Oh, fuck. That's more complicated than I thought, but... Um, it's actually safe. Alright, then we'll defend this pawn. And assert slight positional dominance. Which doesn't matter. Um, for anything other than bragging rights. Alright, so... I had banked here on queen g5, so we're just going to go for it. Hmm. The ideas of knight d4, knight f5 to follow. Um, okay, we'll exchange here. This is going to be an awkward endgame. All right. This endgame just continues to get more and more awkward. Um, this is our target. We win the target? Uh, that's weird. That ain't supposed to happen. Alright. Well, I'll take it. Um, 
Hmm. Rook D E one. That's the fighting move here. Let's do it. It's risky. There's no reason to take this much risk at this position. Oh, here we go. And then we can exchange the rooks and just enjoy a pure pawn up endgame. Well, how about that? Um. Yeah. That's crazy. Just how awesome this endgame looks, anyway. Um. Okay, we need to nail down these pawns in some kind of shape that's predictable. While also trying to nail this knight into the corner. Um, right, so they're going to escape the knight out of the corner, as they should. Um, and we're going to take as much space as we can. Um, hmm, that's modestly annoying. Um, it's actually quite difficult to play against. Knight d5, I need to like defend this weakness back here. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, I do have some... Well, I don't have a live YouTube audience. I do have something of a YouTube audience, but it's nothing to speak of. So it makes sense that since he has a wider audience, they would all show up for his live streams. Uh, do I play B5 here, or do I take... Since the tournament clock's ticking, we're just going to keep playing moves. Uh, we got seven minutes left in the tournament. You got this weird situation where... Okay, maybe I have a winning position. Maybe not. But either way, if I don't keep making moves, I'm not going to get the point, even if the game is completely winning. Which I don't think it is, but... Um, sure would be nice if it were. If Rook E8, uh, um, well, that's not what we're looking at now. All right. Finally, freedom. My knight lands on D4 with some kind of an effect. Um... They might hit this. They might not. Um. Hmm. Okay, our knight's loose. We need to do something about our knight. Um. I guess we'll protect this pawn. It seems to be protected. They're gonna just let me promote my pawn. Works for me. Or rather, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, their king could actually stop this. I forgot about that. Um...
Mm -hmm. Alright, let's see what happens here. Rook takes, my knight is prone, but my knight is active. Um, so knight covers d7, but their knight covers d6. They've got a lot of territory covered. Uh, that's risky. Let's see if we exchange down into this. Pawns separated by at least two files are safe. If Rook takes, I win. Um, yeah, my pawns are separated by at least two files, so at least one of these does promote. Um, that's how that goes. Alright, thanks for the game. I'm not actually sure. Like, there are some ways to try to make that more complicated toward the very end. Although I think I prevail. I'm almost certain I do. <laughs> Pairing players in the last three minutes. Are we serious? I guess we're serious. Alright, we'll try to win with the last three minutes of the tournament. Probably playing against some master, and I just, we're playing my main line, except I messed it up. So that's not great. Um, castling is normal, but bishop g5 looks interesting. Bishop g5 looks like I'm in a world of pain. Um, they did not play bishop g5. All right. Let's get our pieces active before our time runs out. Yeah, they might just play like h3 or rook e1 or rook b1 or something. For rook b1, I probably need to play rook b8 or queen... Um, Queen C8 doesn't look terrible. Normally you'd not want to play this, but I want to play a sacrifice. So, this is one way to line up a sacrifice, but I don't think it works. Yeah, I don't have enough pieces attacking for this sack on H3 to work. See, if they play pawn H3, I have to step back. If they play pawn g4 afterward, then I think I can take it. Maybe. Uh, let's castle so I don't get mated. And, yeah, the end of the tournament's going to happen the next minute or so, if it's not already happened. So no more tournament points for us. We're just going to try to win the game. Just for honor, for glory. For whatever. We can't make them move any faster. Although it would be hard for them to move any slower, so... Um, we'll put the rook on an open file. So that makes this easier to attack. Right. So maybe if they play pawn g4, I do knight takes. Just for blitz excitement. Um, yeah, knight takes looks interesting. Oh, I'm sorry, this just straight up wins the piece right back. Hello. But they have bishop e2 if they are looking for it. 
which they aren't. Um, so here, oh my goodness, I don't know what's happening. This pawn's hanging. Everything's on fire. Um, yeah, let's get this knight to safety. And I guess I don't really know what to do here. This looks best, but if I missed a tactic, it's all over. But if I didn't miss a tactic, this does look best. So hopefully I didn't. Hopefully this is fine. Um... Yeah, I guess rook e6, rook g6 is eventually on the table. Um, although I don't think I have checkmate. Sure, it'd be nice if we did. But chess is not simple. Oh, alright, let's take this. I was just saying chess is not simple, but... Hey, look, we're on a pawn up endgame. Um... We're in a difficult pawn-up endgame with almost no winning chances. Uh, that's cool. So... We need to trade to pick this. Oh, I'm sorry, we need to stop this pawn from advancing. And see what we can do to make some counter threats as their pawn races. Um, this is curious. Didn't expect to see that today. But yeah, they can't take the rook. They have to go back. It's flashy, but, like, my position still sucks. I need to now go back to defend this and make some threats against the king to force this pawn to promote. And hopefully they don't beat me somehow. But it's not looking good. Yeah, no, I played a bad move. Um, all right, let's see what they do about this. So they're not going to oppose this rook here. Um, so now we can make threats against that. Yeah, they helped my rook get more active. Trophy for effort. Definitely I'm taking the trophy for effort. Oh my goodness, really? So, we have a draw. No. <laughs> we have an unclear position now. <laughs> um... How strange. Um, they are not interested in a draw. They are risking it as much as we are. Um, Except I think they have this. Hmm. 
I have no tricks here. I have no tricks here. Yeah, we'll just concede. Well played. Our opponent is rated 2194. And when we went berserk, they managed to beat us, so... But hey, that game didn't count. So, trophy for effort. And it didn't count toward our performance rating of 2541. So, yeah, that was not bad. Not a bad tournament. Tough loss. A very intense endgame. Much, much to my surprise. They had many resources that endgame, but also they had twice as much thinking time as I had, so... That was quite exciting. Yeah, wow, what a tournament. Hope we all enjoyed this.